another thing that you should always, when there's a graph, you should always look at and see if it has meaning. Okay, so you look at the slope, see if it has meaning. Now the other one. So I'm going to show you a velocity time graph up here, meters per second versus seconds. And I'm going to draw something on here. Okay, and we're going to call this three seconds, we'll call this zero seconds. We'll call this, uh, let's keep this simple, we'll call this four meters per second. Okay? First of all, if we describe what that object is doing, is traveling at four meters per second the whole time from zero to what? Three seconds. So everybody see what it represents? Like a car going at four meters per second, and it keeps going at four, at four, at four, at four for a whole three seconds. Can somebody tell me if you drive a car, okay, or you run, or a bicycle, or whatever, and you're going at four meters per second for three seconds, how far did you go? 12 meters. Let me make it simpler. Let's say you're in a car and you're driving 50 miles per hour, okay, for two hours. So you're going 50 miles per hour and you drive for two hours. How far did you go? 100 miles, okay? What did you do there, okay? If you didn't accelerate, we had acceleration problems last night. If you didn't accelerate, you took the how fast times the how long to get your answer, right? Okay, up here, that would be four times three, okay? Now, if I shade this in, what shape is that? It's a box or it's a rectangle. Okay. If I said let's calculate the area of that rectangle, okay, how do you calculate the area of a rectangle? Base times height. Base times height or length times width. However you want to think about it, right? You take this times this. Let's calculate the area of that rectangle. You would take this, the base, three seconds, times the height, which is four meters per second. What happens to the seconds? This is a fraction. What happens? They cancel and we get what? Twelve meters. On a velocity versus time graph, okay, the area of the graph, so the area under the line, if you shade it in like I did just there, the area has meaning. Okay? What does the area represent? You might want to say distance. Okay? If it's a velocity time graph, we could even make, take it a little further. We could say it represents the displacement okay? from zero to three seconds okay? or the change in position. So I'm just going to put up here displacement. Okay, or the, 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 what, the, what displacement happened from zero to three seconds. Okay? The actual displacement depends on where it starts. We're not going to get in that involved. Okay? So the area has meaning. It's how far okay? or how much it changed by. Okay? And since this velocity is positive, do we also know which way? Absolutely. It's in the positive direction. So we know displacement. Okay? All right. So let me give you something else. Let's say the velocity time graph look like this, where the velocity is doing what? It's staying the same? Increasing. No, it's changing, right? Okay. So now it's like you're in your car and sometimes you're going 50 miles per hour, sometimes you're going 40, sometimes you're going 30, sometimes you're going 20. Can you just take how fast times how long then? No. Okay. But what you can do, if you graph it, okay, there's other ways you can do it if you know the acceleration. Okay, which we do with the numbers. But graphically, if you, put, if you put this on here, okay, I'll make up some numbers again. Let's say this is 10 meters per second, okay, and we'll say that this is two seconds. Can you calculate the area of that shape? Yes. Okay, what shape is it if I shade it in here? It's a triangle. In fact, it is a right triangle, okay? So we can take the area of a triangle is what? <coughs> Yep, it's just the same thing as a rectangle except cut in half. Because if you picture a rectangle and you cut it diagonally in half, you get what? Two triangles, right? So this should, you never, no one ever told you that. Picture it. Rectangle, cut it in half, you get two triangles. Okay, that's the quick way to remember it if you ever forget it. Okay, one half base times the height. Okay, so here we can have the area and we can get the displacement again from this. It would be 10 times 2, which is what? 20, and then cut it in half, so we're back to what? 10. So 10 meters. Now, this, that's what you need to know for this course, okay? On a velocity time graph, slope means acceleration, area means change in displacement, okay? Or, excuse me, change in position or displacement, okay? Uh, or maybe distance if you take the sign off, okay? Now, with this in mind, okay, this is not in this course, and, uh, but I want to mention it anyway. Can I erase what's above the line? Everybody okay, if, if you are writing down, you don't have to. Can I erase above the line? I mean, this will be on YouTube if you want to see it again. But if you're a notes person, this is the kind of thing you write down. Okay, 
Uh, what if on a velocity time graph, I gave you that? Can you calculate? Now, if you can, be quiet for a minute. Uh, can you calculate the area of that crazy shape? Or let me make it even worse. Could you calculate the area of that shape? No. Okay. Unless you have what? Now someone can chime in. What do you have to have to be able to calculate areas of curves under the line? Anybody know? You have to do that one box right yes. Right and you're, eventually you're going to call it integration. Okay. You have to have calculus to be able to get the area of this shape. Okay. So, by the way, that's what calculus is. The, fun, the, the big thing in calculus is slope and area okay, for curves. That's one of the big things you do in calculus. Okay? It doesn't sound so scary anymore, does it? If you're just calculating slopes and areas of weird shapes. Okay? That's a big chunk of calc. Okay? That will not be in this class, but there are mathematical ways where you can calculate the area of that. Okay? You just need some advanced math. Everything we do, straight lines, shapes you recognize. They're either triangles or rectangles or squares. Okay? All right, so now, on a position time graph, position time graph, okay, is area going to mean anything? What would the area be? It'd be a, the, you have units of meters times a second. Is that anything we have? No. So does area mean anything on a position time graph? Not in here, not on a position time graph, okay? So no area to worry about. Now we've got one more graph to look at. What's the last graph we're going to have to look at? That one you have to write down. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. What's the last graph? We looked at position time, velocity time, what else? What's the only other quantity we have right now versus time? What have we been doing? Acceleration. Yep. Acceleration versus time. Okay. And we'll throw something on here like that. Okay. Call that 3 meters per second squared. Maybe call that 5 seconds. Okay. Can you calculate the area of that shape? Sure, 3 meters per second squared times 5 seconds. One of the seconds cancel. We get 15 meters per second. What's that the unit of? Velocity. And I'm putting numbers on it because the areas are a little tougher to visualize than the slopes. Because not all of you have calculated areas under lines before. Everyone's calculated slopes. Okay, So that's why I'm putting the numbers on now, and I didn't for the slopes. Because slope you've done since you were like in fifth grade or sixth grade or whatever. Okay. Uh, so 15 meters per second. That's a velocity. Now, acceleration is a little bit trickier. Okay? This isn't just a velocity. If we're accelerating, that means our velocity is doing what? Or decreasing, right? It means it's just one word for that. Changing. Okay? So this is really a change in velocity okay, of 15 meters per second. It's a change in velocity of 15 meters per second. So on an acceleration versus time graph, area has meaning. It means change in velocity, okay? And that should make sense, okay? If I put in here what this is, okay? This is an acceleration times a time, okay? Remember what acceleration equaled? Delta V over T. What happens if I multiply it by both sides by T? Do I end up back here? Yep. So this must equal delta V, okay? That's some extra work. The only thing you really need here is that this picture and that the idea that the area is a change in velocity. So area is a change in velocity. So the key part here is this part. This is just me showing you some math for those of you that got like the math part. Okay. The key is that it's area is change in velocity. Questions. So lots of things mean things. Okay. Is that something if you think you're going to get confused, can you have that written down on your equation sheet ahead of time? Yes, and I would do it. Put a position time graph, a velocity time graph, and an acceleration time graph on your equation sheet and say slope means nothing, area means this, that kind of thing. Or no, slope means this, area means nothing, and then so forth and so on for all of them. That's what I would do if I were you, unless this was like a piece of cake, you have it, you got the opener completely correct without any help, and then when I was doing this, the area stuff, you're like, oh yeah, I can figure that out in a split second. If that's not the case, if it's not automatic, write it down. Okay? All right. I will stop this.